Welcome to Extra. I'm Joanne Hines. And I'm Georgia Lash. Here at Extra, we bring you expanded coverage of recently broadcast features from Sun City News. Spring is here, and we are ready to spring into action on our first story, Georgia. Spring is the season of new. We all love new places to explore and certainly new options for dining. Our Sun City TV news anchor, Norma Taylor, visited with our Bluffton new neighbor, the Culinary Institute of the South, and got the yummy details from the school's dean. Well, Chef, we here at the magnificent, your new home here for the Culinary Institute of the South. And tell us about, I know you have two restaurants here, or the uh, cafe and also the bistro. Tell us about them. Great, yes, we are in our brand new building and I'm very excited to be here. So the bistro, it's um, it, right now we're doing a three course meal and we're doing um, basically a farm to table, but it's all served by students and it's all cooked by students who are getting ready to graduate. So it's been very exciting this semester having the bistro, bistro open and seeing all the guests filed in and actually getting to experience uh, the students interaction with them and the food. Okay. Well, let's go inside sure. and give us a sampling of what you're offering, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Come on. Well, we're in the Bistro Chef. Tell us about the kind of food you serve here and also the capacity and what happens in this beautiful restaurant. Well, great. Well, actually, it is small. We say small but mighty, right? So we have 24 seats and it's open to the public. So it's a three-course meal. We just do one price for $25. And it's basically, there again, seasonal. Farm, farm to table, and we also let the students from the other class help design the menu of what it's going to look like. So at this point, the students have gone through almost all of their classes, from basic cooking skills, now to plating the food and pulling that ticket and actually executing it. So it's very important for them to learn that skill. And then on the other side, the students who are serving. You know, we all know that uh, anything liquid comes from the right with the right hand. All the solids come from the left with the left hand with the entree at the six o'clock. We know all clearing is from the right with the right hand, for the exception of the B&B. So we're very particular because some of our hospitality students or even our culinarians will find themselves in the front of the house. And we also want the culinary students to actually understand what goes on in the front of the house and to appreciate uh, how their food is being presented. You know, you can have the best chefs in the world in the back, but if it's not presented well in the front, you're in trouble. Spoken like a true chef, I would imagine. <laughs> yes, serving from this side, and yes, yes. definitely that. And, and you know what? I love that kind of service. I really do. Now, reservations are required. That's, that's correct. And you're only open at this point for lunch. That is correct. We're only open for lunch. Uh, we have two seatings around, uh, I think one's around 11.45 and one's around 12. As we grow, though, we will be having uh, more dining experiences in the evening. We would, we're can't wait to start doing that in the evening, and we'll get there really soon. We've been very pleased with the growth of the school. Okay. Now let's go take a look at your other, yes. the Cliss Cafe. Yes, sure. Let's, let's head, head over that way. Well, Chef, now we're in the Cliss Cafe, so tell us about the cafe. Yes, the, the Liz and, and Todd Cliss Cafe. This is um, actually, as we know, we talked about earlier, uh, every inch of the building was designed to be a classroom space. So. Uh, the cafe is open uh, from 7.30 to 2, uh, Monday through Friday, and we try to show a little sampling of a lot of different types of things, but of course all the food is prepared by the students. Um, so last year, or la yesterday as I said, you know, we were talking earlier about the final uh, for the bacon and pastry department. So you can see the German chocolate cake who had the, you know, with the buttercream. With, so, some, with some pieces taken out of it. Absolutely. <laughs> so we sell things whole, you know, cakes whole, we sell pies whole, we sell, uh, and all, we also sell slices. And we also sell a, like a grab and go type of lunch. This is also prepared by students, so anyone can come in from those hours, pick up something uh, to eat or a snack, uh, help themselves to a beverage, beverage or a hot cup of coffee, and just um, sit out and enjoy this beautiful weather we're now having. So, I know, and you can eat outside here. You have the tables and the chairs outside. The tables and the chairs. And, you know, it gives our, uh, also, it is a classroom, so it gives our management students an opportunity to, to sharpen their soft skills on um, meeting and greeting customers and uh, actually working the POS system and seeing what's being sold, how it's being sold. And for, for a chef, that's invaluable information. How do you schedule employees? You know, why is this outselling this? So they can see real-time numbers and actually learn when they leave here, they'll learn how to run a business. 
very important. And how many students do you have now, Chef? We have our, our probably between 70 and 80. Um, so we're doing, we're growing very fast. Um, and as you know, the governor of South Carolina started free tuition in January. So um, that's a, a huge incentive to go to school now. And the job opportunities out here are just endless. So can someone even my age be taking a class free? We have, are you limited? We have classes. Uh, we have people in our classes in their 70s, um, maybe close to even 80, and they're having a great time. You know, and when you hear um, some of the older group coming, you know, coming to school, uh, one lady said she just wanted to come to actually start uh, just to be able to cook better. But now she's talking about starting her own, her own little home business where she will actually hold cooking classes in her home. Well, we love your new place. We think Thank it's you. fantastic. And I know all of Sun City is going to be here real, real <laughs> soon. You're going to have to start expanding. Tell them come early because we do sell out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you very much. I can't wait for the expanded food service and the cooking classes. Definitely. Let's move on to our next story, which is very close to you, Joanne. Thank you, Georgia. You're right about that, Georgia. For over two years, I have been involved with creating children's lending libraries. One of the best parts is working with so many good volunteers and encountering the generosity of so many. Here's our latest donation from an unexpected group of donors. This month is National March into Literacy Month, and Joanne, I believe you're leading the charge. So let's start with you telling us about the Children's Lending Library that you spearheaded. Thank you, Georgia. Um, we did this about two years ago. It's called Mr. Pig's Book Nook, and it is in Piggly Wiggly grocery stores. Now, we did it because the children were not, getting, uh, not able to get any books during COVID, of course, and uh, they, the libraries were closed. And we came up with an idea, and it's just went, it's just gone crazy. It's really gone crazy. It's a genius idea. Now today you received a very big donation. So how will you be using 1,500 plus books? 1,557, to be exact. Um, we have four book nooks now. We have four book nooks. We have one in Ridgeland, Port Royal, Hardyville, and we opened up our last one in Walterboro. And they, the books, you know, we ask the children to, you know, remove, read, and return. Sometimes they don't make it back to the store. So we're always in need of books. And this, this, this was just unbelievable. So we're going to divvy them up, of course. We've got to code them first. And we're going to divvy them up and put them out on the shelves for the kids. That's great. And let's just give everybody one reminder, your organization that is working with you on this. My organization is the General Federation of Women's Clubs. It's the GFWC, as we kindly record, uh, refer to it, of the Low Country, the clubs of the Low Country. And my um, CSP, Community Service Project, is the Arts and Culture Service Project. Sounds great. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Georgia. Lucas, you are the man to tell us all about Riverview Charter School. So here at Riverview, um, core values are a really big part. Um, even going into kindergarten, you learn our core values, which kind of are a way to hold us together and hold us accountable here. And um, they really, they teach us more than I think we realize because they're really things that you can live by. And they really, um, they really are a big part of the experience here at Riverview. Now at Riverview, you have, I understand you do a lot of projects and student involvement. Noah, this book swap that we're here for today, how did you get the students involved? Um, we used the uh, morning news and we had a couple people talk on the news about the, um, the book swap and they would tell what you do and we would get all the books organized and then the people would come to our classroom and they'd take their books. Now, the morning news that you're talking about, folks, give us an idea. Who does the morning news here? Um, we, uh, all of us do. We're on the morning show team. There's three people that speak on camera, Jonathan, Virginia, and Lucas. They talk on the beginning. And then everyone in their seventh grade and eighth grade team produce their own bits and then we put it together. It's pretty slick. We've got a promotional video. I saw the commercial. It was excellent. I think they ought to turn it in for an Emmy win. Mrs. Clancy, you have led a fine group of students here. I understand the school's motto is learning by doing. Yeah. 
congratulations for doing an incredible book swap. What was involved? So part of our mission statement is for our students to have service learning opportunities. So every single grade level at Riverview um, comes up with a project that can benefit the community. So the maybe first graders, they write, or maybe it's second graders write poems and they go to nursing homes and read them. And they do different projects around town, maybe cleaning up um, the parks. We've done that in the past. So this year, the opportunity came because of my mother-in-law who happens to be in GFWC uh, the president this year, Phyllis Sipple, um, she was telling me that they were doing Mr. Pig's Book Nook, and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, that would be a, a wonderful opportunity to, to uh, spread literacy in our community. So we had watched a movie at Christmas time in our class called The Ultimate Gift, and one of the gifts was a gift of service, so we talked about what we could do. We only meet two hours a week, and we do the morning show, so it had to be something that was manageable for us, so we came up with the idea of the book swap, and it benefited GFWC and benefited us to be able to give a gift of books to our community, and our kindergarten partners through eighth graders brought over 1,500, what was it, 1,557 books that we're donating to the community. Secure for our future when you have this kind of group that you're training. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your efforts. We invited those students to come into our studio to produce a segment, so keep an eye out for their production. And speaking of keeping an eye out, for future stories. Georgia, you're up with our next segment. You may be familiar with sailboats, motorboats, or pontoon boats, but have you heard of dragon boats? Our Sun City TV News sports anchor, Doug Wright, met with the president and team organizer of Beaufort Dragon Boats to learn about this sport and an upcoming event we should get on our calendars. Well, Doreen, you are the president and outreach coordinator of a group called Dragon Boat Buford. What is that all about? Well, Dragon Boat Buford is a group of people who are mostly cancer survivors. Uh, we also have supporters and we have a wonderful club that is housed at uh, in downtown Buford and we paddle out of the Port Royal Sound Foundation on the Chichesse River. It's a great group of people. Uh, the camaraderie is fabulous. And you have a big event coming up this summer. Tell us about that. Yeah, we're really excited. We've got our Dragon Boat Festival, um, and that's going to be Saturday, June 25th, at the Waterfront Park in downtown Buford. We have got probably about, approximately about uh, 30 teams coming, some of them from out of town, but most of them are going to be community teams. Okay, that's great. And Lori, you of course are involved in getting sponsorships and getting teams together. How is that going? It's going great. It's about building excitement and camaraderie with people that you may know from a club or from a fitness group. So for instance, the Peg Welch Ladies League team here in Sun City, they're putting together a team and they will be on a boat paddling and having fun during that day. And this day is all about raising funds for our organization, Dranga Boat Beaufort, because we help um, through Doreen's outreach, we help cancer patients with any type of financial need they may have while they're going through treatment. So this is a big day. This is our big fundraiser. We're looking for sponsors and we have sponsors lined up that would be on the finish line, the start line, the scoreboard, overall being announced. And it's celebrity staff by T-Bone, what's his name? T-Bone Taylor of 104 The Surf. He's our big MC for the day and it's going to be an exciting day. So we look at, we need sponsors, we need people to form teams, any clubs in Sun City that may be interested in forming a team, please reach out to me at Dragon Boat Buford. I'm also on the teams committee. Um, so it's just a great way to have a lot of fun on a great day for a great purpose. And I understand that both of you, in fact, are paddlers, as they are called. Yes. Now, how in the world did you get started doing that? <laughs> well, several years ago, um, my husband and I were living up north, and we met a couple who were from Canada. Now, dragon boating is very, very popular in Canada. Um, and she told me that she was a teacher, uh, and during the summertime, she was on a dragon boat team. And I found out about it, but there was no dragon boat teams in downtown Rochester, New York. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I, come, I came down here to Sun City almost eight years ago, and lo and behold, um, I met a woman who is um, 
part of the Dragon Boat Club and she asked me to come along and I got in the boat once and I've been dragon boating ever since. I love it. Well, that's fantastic. Lori, how did you get involved in paddling? I know that you're a fitness trainer and a motivator and so how did you get involved? Well, I had a friend that's been paddling for Dragon Boat for a couple of years and she said, come on out set one Saturday and try it. And I'm like, I have no idea what it was, what you did. I was like, all right, if it involves working out and having fun. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And I got on that boat, and as soon as I sat down, I put a paddle in my hand. My first stroke in the water, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm, in. I'm in. So I've joined the team, and we have a, a traveling team. So we actually just committed to was Dragon Boat um, Charleston on May 7th to paddle. Our team is going to be paddling there. So it's just a great way to be with a great group of people who are very motivational. Many of them are cancer survivors, so that's, that's always inspiring to me to be with people who have overcome such hardships and they're strong and they just want to persevere ahead. Now you, you're recruiting Sun City residents to form teams, be sponsors, whatever. What are the volunteer opportunities? Um, volunteer. Not just for the event, but. Okay. Um, we have a group of people uh, who actually offer rides to cancer patients, uh, whether they need to go back and forth to the cancer centers for treatments or doctor's appointments that type of thing. We are, our club is an all-volunteer organization. And, how, and how, how big is the organization? Um, right now we have approximately 60 uh, members and not everyone who belongs to the club is a paddler. Some people just are perhaps are social members. Um, they can come to our events, uh, whether we have uh, social hours, that okay. type of thing. All right, very cool. Well, we look forward to June 25th, and uh, ladies, you're doing a great thing, and we appreciate your time today. That looks like fun. Hard work, but mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. for a great cause. Well, we look forward to Doug's follow-up when this unique event takes place. Let's finish up, Joanne, with the story that both of us were involved in, the St. <laughs> Jude Walk. The St. Jude Research Hospitals is a beloved charity helping so many families. Our General Federation of Women's Clubs of the Low Country, best known as the GFWC, picked up the gauntlet to raise money hosting the St. Jude Walk right here in Sun City. While I volunteered, Georgia got the story. Let's watch. Just like the Postal Service, the General Federation of Women's Clubs of the Low Country don't let anything stop them from their mission. And Lynn, you were part of this mission today. We're still going to charge on to raise some money for St. Jude's Research Hospitals. Tell us about what was the original plan. So the original plan was that the Silver Striders of Sun City were going to lead a 5K route that would go around the pavilion, through the tunnel, up to Hampton Circle, and come on back, and it would be an even 5K. Now that we're seeing some rain and some significant wind, our thought is, for safety purposes, we're probably going to go outside and just do the one-mile loop that's right around the pavilion for walkers, runners, whoever it is that um, shows up. And I think it's great that you already have some people here, so yeah. it is not a cancellation. No. It is not a cancellation, and you will strive to do your best with it. Sharon, you have got a whole cadre of volunteers here this morning, and like I said, nothing stops the GFWC. So what was the process like now that this is your second year of doing this? Well, George, it was a lot easier than it was last year because we learned a few things. Um, we gathered people who were interested in heading up a committee and then from there we recruited volunteers and as you can see there are a lot of women here who have put in a lot of time and effort to make this a great walk run. You know, some things we could control, but the weather we cannot. <laughs> but I don't think that's stopping anybody from coming in to do what they needed to do, which is yeah. such a, like, heartwarming. Yes, if not the is. weather being warming, <laughs> this is heartwarming. Sure. Is there any estimate of how many hours you've all put in? Um, it's close so far to, I'd say, 200 just in soliciting um, sponsors and going to Kroger and Starbucks and Dunkin Donuts to solicit food. Um, and all of them have been absolutely wonderful. 
Um, we bought fruit this year rather than pastries because we said they need something, you know, that's going to be healthy. Margaret, you had quite a job getting this ready today. What was your role in, in this process? I was the chairman of getting all the volunteers together and assigning them to their different physicians. Now you mentioned the passion that everyone has. I was going to ask, why do you stick your neck out to do this? I think I just have uh, in me an innate feeling of uh, helping people. I am a German born West Berliner. I was born during the Berlin airlift in 1949. I saw as an adult how people back then rallied and I just have that in me that I think we need to help people who are in horrible circumstances. And these families at St. Jude's really need our help. Uh, children uh, shouldn't get cancer. I'm a cancer survivor. I know what it's like. They do not deserve this. They, uh, no one does really, but passion for helping others is what I really enjoy. Well, you have a beautiful story that you've shared with us. Thank you for all you've done today. Julie, you're busy this morning. I don't want to take too much of your time, but what was your role? You've got to share that with all of us. Well, my role was supposed to be putting up the signs to encourage people to walk and where to walk for the St. Jude's Walk, but with the rain and the weather conditions, we just had to revamp a little bit. You know, you just go with the flow, it's a great organization, and we just need to continue what we, can, what we started. You know, you just have to do what you do. I have to <laughs> ask you, why do you all do what you do? Ah, oh, <laughs> for St. Jude's, it's just a wonderful organization, you know, the, because the parents, the families of these children who are in dire need of medical care, um, they don't have to worry about the financial part of it. They can be at the hospital with their kids um, for the encouragement, for the love that these children need. Because when we're ill, whether we're in the hospital or not, you need someone to be there that loves you to take care of you. Martha, I think you have one of the fun volunteer jobs here today. Tell us what your role is in this process. Well, I had the opportunity to go out and get some generous donations from merchants for our refreshments. We've really talked to all these volunteers today. Why do you do it? First of all, I, this group of women are so generous and so welcoming and so inclusive. I love being around them and I love being uh, involved in the many, many projects that they do. And of course, St. Jude, is a fabulous uh, organization that benefits so many families and children that it's great to sponsor. Well, thank you for doing what uh -huh. you do. Kathy, I met you last year here at the St. Jude Walk, and I said I thought you should be the St. Jude spokesperson for Sun City. I'm giving you that job right now. <laughs> I love it. Well, there's nothing I like better than talking about St. Jude's. Uh, this is a big year. 2022 is not only the 10th anniversary of my bringing the St. Jude Walk to Sun City, but this marks the 60th anniversary for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. When Danny Thomas started this 60 years ago, you know, he was struggling. He was a comedian. He couldn't make ends meet. His family was really destitute. He went to church. And he got down on his knees and he prayed to St. Jude. And he said, St. Jude, if you can help me, if you can just help me with my career, I will build a hospital in your name. He has done that. And he has brought the childhood cancer rates down 40% from where they were. And they're marching toward getting it to 100% childhood cure. So it's, it's an amazing story, St. Jude's. And it's interesting, we should tell everyone, we aren't just doing this here in Sun City. Today is a national day. That's exactly right. We've got people walking all over this country and actually all over the world for St. Jude's because what a lot of people don't know, they share every bit of their remarkable research with, free of charge, with hospitals all over the world. 
So it is a wonderful, wonderful charity, and we appreciate you being here for us to share this. Like I said before, this group is like the Postal Service. Nothing stops them from their mission to help St. Jude's Research Hospitals. We've sent the walkers and the runners on their way, and all we'll be waiting for is to hear how much generosity has been shown today. And despite that weather, the GFC didn't let St. Jude down. We're waiting for donation results to come in. Well, that's extra for April. I'm Joanne Hines. Please check out our program guide in the Sun Stations and the Sun City website for our other Sun City TV monthly shows. And I'm Georgia Lash. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next month as we bring you extra coverage of stories and features from Sun City News.